Hello and welcome back to How to Level Up. And this time we're looking at Rogue. This is a deck which uh, in the uh, September season has actually got me to Diamond pretty quickly. Uh, I'm a Diamond like 8 or 9 at the moment I think. But I think I could get to Diamond 5. Uh, a lot of it is this guy right here, the World Kick Master. This card is amazing. I've only got one of them. It's possible like, I know I noticed that when I play at this rank, like, there's cards which I could have, I could swap things around a little bit here. Um, like a lot of people have got two sages. I just got this one golden sage, and that's about it. But this card I like to have. I like this. I do like the spellburst effect. So I've only got one secret passage. I've got like it's like a little bit of a mix of stuff. I do go heavy on the secrets with six secrets in total. Um, I think it's kind of useful to have that. But this take. But yeah, I mean the one the one difference I would make that I would consider making if anything, would be to remove the uh, Shifty Sofa more and place in a second World Kick Master. And it's because when you get to Diamond, like a lot of the time, it's like the only real reason you win is because your opponent, like, you generate more cards than your opponent. Like, you're not, like, it's not, it's just, I mean, that really is what it comes down to. Like, it's just like about card generation. Um, no, it's not like that for every class you play against. But I have noticed a lot of games are really decided like that. It's like not; it doesn't really even go to the end. It's just like, okay, well, you've got like eight cards and I've got three, or you've got two cards. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's like it doesn't like, um, you know, it just doesn't matter because w the reason why it's so powerful, well, I'm not pretty sure talk so much because I've only got one in there, but I would put I put I I may I may put it in the second. Is if you're on ten mana, right? And you do World Kick Master into eviscerate you basically get a chain where you could like play like two or three cards from it and you're constantly generating cards and and and, and think about the power right the real power is world kick master into wand thief right so not only that so you play that for three mana world kick master i mean that and then that combo on its own is good enough right world kick master into wand thief three mana get two minions on board for like a total stat line of what two four but you get an additional two cards added to your hand. And one of them you even get to choose, right? So, I mean, it's pretty amazing like that. Um, I also have this, the Waggle Pick. This is an, also an unusual choice to have. So there's like different, there's different like things that... Yeah, there's a couple of different choices I could make. Get rid of these two. And, um, but yeah, Scorpion is very useful. Um, in general, yeah. I, I haven't really spoken about like the main sort of like... The focus of the deck. In general, you're going to want to start with like a spy mistress or a secret keeper. Um, and in general, if you think, and also if you think like you can't, uh, you know, I would I would always coin into Hanar as well. It was a lot better when it was a one five. To be honest, this this card used to be a one five originally before it was nerfed, but it's still really good. Um, like you got to you got to think like it can be difficult to keep it alive, but Sometimes you're not that dependent on it. As you go up the ranks, like, like when you're at platinum, I just hot, you know, and lower ranks, it's like you want to sort of like hold on to your better cards, so you can just like get so you can get huge amount of secrets out of that. And the same, and the same with you know, world kick or whatever. But when you get to higher rank, it's it's like you you, you kind of can just take one or two if you still feel like if it's good for your current tempo, right? But yeah, like, so Secret Keeper can be really useful. I don't know. I've often, like, if I would take anything out, like, of the earlier stuff, I'm just, I, like, I mean, I mean, because I've played this deck a lot recently, I sort of, like, thinking about, like, how I might slightly modify it. But if I was to take out any of the stuff from uh, the early stuff, I'd probably take out maybe a Secret Keeper because it doesn't get to buff. So, I mean, a lot of the time playing Secret Keepers later in the game um, when they're of very little use. And just literally just like you know just for the stat line which is not very useful um but you do have to be the only problem with this deck is you do have to be a little bit careful that a lot of stuff has got barely any health um and you really have to like manage exactly how you play all your turns and you need to know like if, if you're playing against this an opponent's secret you know you can hold back like there's nothing better than like when you get like a um 
But say they've got the, the secret that does three damage to all minions, right? And you attack, all your minions die, but then you like transform this to one that costs one more, and it's obviously like a one one at that point. So you can do stuff like that. But yeah, in general, like you want you, you sort of trade out a lot of your minions. Um, I tend not to go too aggro. A lot of some decks like the Aro go really, really super aggro. Um, they tend they tend to have like like little, you know like the charging pirate, the two one for one and stuff like that. This is really about you get cards. Bamboozle is probably one of my favorite secrets. It's like can be like, and some decks like for instance against priests, it's like they never attack you your minions, so it's not that useful. But I don't know. They, they do often just attack your minions because it's like the, the reason why because it's like that is just how the game is at the moment. That that there's not so much just ignoring the minions. Like because of rush, it really has made the minions kind of often get attacked. And this obviously gets turns a one into a four. It's it's pretty significant. Like I'm surprised this didn't get uh this hasn't been nerfed actually. Because this can really change things up. You know, like your your one you know, let's say this is already taking damage like a one one, it immediately becomes a six million card. This is gonna have like a massive stat line, like you know, like or the order of like six five, five six sort of thing. At least, right? And then it might have additional uh, benefits depending on how good the card you get is. So really, really useful for that. Uh, Scorbid is useful because a lot of stuff, I mean, your own minions have got low amount of health, but um, yeah. And then this card, Blackjack Stunner, this is such a good card. Like, It's like a cheaper sap. And obviously, if you're running six secrets, you're always, you're going to very often be in a position where you can trigger it. Um, it's why you have to have this many secrets. Because if you didn't have this many, um, I mean, if you look at rogue secrets in general, right? It has at least built the only one we down here is plagiarize, uh, which is a new one. But the, but this the, the rogue secrets are good, right? They really are good secrets. Are there actually any more? No. Okay. Um, yeah, secret passage uh, incidentally also got nerfed to four cards. It's still good a card. It's still a good card. Five was better, right? Obviously, but. I don't know this. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting one to use. You know, I've used it several times when I'm just looking for like that last eviscerate and stuff like that. Like, it's certainly like. I mean, is it worth having two of them? Again, it could be worth having two of them. Um. But it is I think it's a case of it probably two of them is probably better in aggro. I've tried to like mix up stuff. This card is amazing. Like if they put in like a last ditch effect with like, they somehow managed to get like like two of the same. Uh, yeah, sometimes with like yeah, you've had two of the same big taunt minions. I remember against Demon Hunter they had that seven nine and they put down another one and then I just killed them both and that was it and that was it. There's there's some really good combos you can get, but I think in general like, yeah, it's just a really good deck. And yeah, it's one of those decks you really just have to play it, like because there's a lot of different things that can happen in the game, and a lot of quite quite kind of quite complex plays. Like, like you can play like a lot of cards in one turn. You can generate a lot of cards in one turn. You're going to need to generate. You know, there is a, there is just a like level of generation with one thief, with uh, Hanar, with uh, Sophomore, uh with World Kick. Um, and even to an extent, you could argue that like Bamboos is sort of like a way to generate a new card. So it's like, um, yeah, it's just a really fun deck to play. Um, but and it will definitely get you to diamond, at least diamond five. Uh, I don't know if it will go beyond that because I haven't been there, but we will see. Anyway, thanks for watching.